Hello students. In our previous video, we saw the merits or achievements of Mendeleev's periodic table. Let us today discuss some of its limitations. The first one in the list is no precise position of hydrogen. You'll think that he has already placed hydrogen here separately on the top. Then why did I say there was no precise position of the hydrogen in the table? Let me explain it to you. Some years after Mendeleev created the periodic table, the atomic structure of the elements were discovered. It was found that every atom has a nucleus in the center that contains protons and neutrons, as well as the electrons which move in the orbits around the nucleus. If we look at the electronic structure of hydrogen, it is similar to that of the elements of the first group. Observe that it has one valence electron just like sodium or potassium. Now this is special because what happens is that during any chemical reaction, hydrogen is able to lose this electron and become positive ion like sodium, potassium or other elements of this group. Also, it can take one electron, configuration of helium, a noble gas, and hence become stable. Now, can you recall which elements gain one electron and form negative ions? Yes, you are right. They are compounds like chlorine and fluorine in group 7. Due to this, hydrogen reacts readily with many elements and forms compounds with variety of properties. Hydrogen, like group 1 elements, forms the positive ions and compounds like them. For example, we take sodium. Sodium reacts with many reagents like chlorine, oxygen and sulfur, etc. to form compounds like sodium chloride, sodium oxide, sodium sulfide, etc. Observe that each of these compounds has plus 1 valency of sodium. Even hydrogen forms similar kind of compounds that is hydrogen chloride with chlorine, hydrogen oxide with, with oxygen that is water and hydrogen sulfide with sulfur. This means hydrogen should be placed with group 1 element, right? Oh, but wait for a second. I just said that hydrogen also has ability to gain electron like group 7 elements. So what about it? The principal similarity between hydrogen and halogen is in the electronic configuration. Hydrogen has one electron in its electron shell and needs one additional electron to fill that shell. The halogens also have seven electrons in their outermost shell and thus needs one additional electron to fill that shell. Thus, in both the cases, one electron is required to complete its valence shell. Hydrogen as well as halogens act like non-metals and thus when they combine with metals, they act as negative ions. In fact, hydrogen and halogens can form both ionic and covalent bonds. The other one is that halogens, as we know, exists naturally as diatomic molecules. Yes, they have two atoms in one molecule. For example, chlorine Cl2 and bromine Br2. Just like this, hydrogen also exists as diatomic molecule H2. As a result of this similarity of properties of hydrogen and halogen, it should be classified as a group 7 element and placed here, isn't it? Thus, Mendeleev's periodic table failed to explain whether to put hydrogen in the first group or seventh group. In fact, hydrogen still is a standalone in the periodic table. Another problem was the position of undiscovered elements. Now you'll tell me, what's the problem with that? Mendeleev had already left some gaps or empty spaces for those undiscovered elements, isn't it? That's right. But his prediction was regarding the properties of elements. He never predicted how many elements would be there in between these two elements. 
So what if more elements were discovered than predicted? Placing them in the table would now disturb the table. So where do we place them then? In fact, how do we place them? Note that in Mendeleev's table, the atomic masses do not increase in a regular manner as one goes from one element to the next element. In some cases, Mendeleev placed elements according to the similarities in their properties and not in the increasing order of their masses. So it was not possible to predict how many elements could be discovered between these two elements. Let's understand it. Consider the atomic masses of argon, which is 39.9, and potassium, which is 39.1. However, argon is placed before potassium in the periodic table. Similarly, tellurium, with mass 127.6, is placed before iodine. Now, say a new element is discovered with mass of 39.7. Where will we place it? After potassium? or in between them. Thus, the placement of undiscovered elements was another problem with Mendeleev's table, as there was no fixed pattern of arranging elements here. The next limitation is that there was no description of atomic structure in his table. What do I mean when I say atomic structure? The atomic structure of any atom of an element gives us the number of protons, neutrons and electrons present in it. We know that Mendeleev's table was based on atomic mass of an atom. You already know that the atomic mass of any atom is equal to sum of protons and neutrons. But this atomic mass does not tell us the number of protons, neutrons or electrons in the atom. In short, nothing can be clearly predicted about the structure of an atom from its atomic mass. For example, we take sodium. We know from the table that its weight is 23. Now from this information, can you tell me how many protons and neutrons it has? Or how many electrons are there in the orbit? The answer is no. And this is true for all elements, right? Yes. We don't get any information regarding structure of atom from the masses given in the table. Hence, we say that Mendeleev's periodic table gave no idea about structure of an atom of that element. Now, this idea of atomic structure leads us to one more limitation of Mendeleev's table. It is the position of isotopes. Well, we'll see that in the next video.